one, Lost in the Sauce with your boy. Welcome to my channel. This is Fest Cook's first video ever. And today we're gonna be making some ragu a bolognese. One of the most traditional ragus, meat sauces that you're gonna find in Italy. Except I'm gonna completely <laughs> because this is not traditional at all. Like I got bacon over here. We know the Italians have been talking about bolognese and we got bacon. That it's not gonna be traditional. You don't have to listen to uh, uh, no -na, no no's way. It's great. I'm not Italian, like I said, but the no no's and the no no's out there. I love you guys. I love you guys a lot. You guys, you guys taught taught me a lot. Everything there is to to Italian cooking, but but let's not let's not be uh, too too reductionist about the traditions here. Let's get started. I got a pot of boiling water here. We're gonna salt it up. Please don't ever boil water without salting it up. Doesn't matter what's going in there. You gotta salt it. Step one, no, not step one. Step one, get yourself a glass. Go down to your Nono's Cantina and get some vino and pour yourself a glass. I mean, we're gonna be here. This is four, four, five hours, guys. So I'm gonna chop it down a little for you guys. But when you're at home, this recipe is not gonna be quick. It's gonna be four or five. If you're quick, two, three hours. So, you gotta get a long boss to get through that. It's real step one. This is a sofrito. Well, right now it's a bowl of vegetables, but it's gonna be a sofrito. Get your water boiling. You've got a, a nice yellow onion here, cooking onion. Uh, we're gonna use a little bit of this pepper, a couple stalks of celery, a couple carrots. And this is where the Italians are gonna get upset because we got a jalapeno. We're gonna get it spicy up in this. I mean, celery, carrots, onion, celery, carrots, onion, celery, carrots, onion, celery, carrots, onion. We get it. You wanna put a bell pepper? Put a bell pepper. Put a parsnip in there? You wanna get a little bit of a, of a creamy style to your sauce? Put a parsnip, put a, put a couple cubes of sweet potato. I mean, this is your opportunity to find what you like. Nothing fancy about it. Make sure your knife is nice and sharp, right? And drop it in. We're not gonna use all this pepper. Just a little bit for the sweetness. Depending on your blender, I got a small blender. So you're gonna want to chop your vegetables to the size of your blender, right? A couple of carrots, you can peel them if you want. I didn't peel them. The outside of the carrot tastes the same as the inside. So if you don't peel it, it's gonna taste the same. A couple stalks of celery. If you're familiar with Italian cooking, they're gonna go in every, pretty much every ragu you can think of. Don't forget your jalapeno. Now, depending on your spiciness level, I'm gonna leave all the seeds in here. They're not very spicy. All right, a little bit of spice. I'm gonna leave all the seeds in. It's gonna get soaked in. We're gonna be adding so much stuff to this. We're not even gonna taste any spice, but it's just a little bit of an extra element. This is gonna sit in the pot about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. It's going to um, soften up for us. Vegetables are gonna cook. And in a second here, we're gonna start uh, building our ragu. All right, our sofrito has been boiling for 15, 20 minutes. A nice way to check is grab your carrot. If your knife slides through pretty even, pretty easily, not a lot of resistance, your sofrito is ready to go. Traditional sofrito, you're chopping, you're chopping, you're chopping, you're chopping, you're there, but it's taking you 10 hours. I'm gonna blend my sofrito. It's faster, uh, it's a little more convenient. So take a slotted spoon or a spider or something and fish out all of your aromatics, the spicy jalapeno, the carrot, the onion, the celery, a little bit of that broth. All right, I'm just gonna be squeezing everything that I've got into my little blender. That is full of flavor, it looks beautiful. But first you need something to blend with, so a little vino. Now I understand not everybody has grandfather's wine kicking around. So if you're buying wine at the store or whatever, Cabernet Sauvignon, something mild, not a lot of tannins, you wanna taste your vegetables, right? You don't wanna be tasting 
tannins in your bolognese. We're gonna blend this up. It literally says on the side, do not blend hot ingredients. So um, don't do this, but use a regular blender uh, that's meant for this. Shake it up. Oh, it's ready. Alright, we're gonna let this cool down and then we're gonna blend it. Look at this beautiful aromatic sofrito that you've made. It's got a little bit of a red color from the red wine. Uh, set this aside, it's gotta cool down. Take your pot of boiling water. You can save this if you're a try hard and you wanna make your own broth. It's useless to me. Let your pan dry out and get a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Use extra virgin olive oil. Don't use the cheapest olive oil on the shelf. You're gonna notice in your dish. So get a little olive oil and just coat the inside of your pan. We've turned it down to low while we prepare our meats for our ragu a la bolognese. I've got ground pork, ground beef, and a smoked bacon. For me, these are incredible ingredients for a flavorful bolognese but your Nona's probably not gonna agree, so keep that in mind. You can make a beautiful lamb bolognese. You can make an incredible venison bolognese. So to tell someone that it's gotta be beef, pork, or fatty pancetta, or whatever, it's up to you. The bolognese is your oyster. You can do with it what you will. Ah, uh, don't put any bacon in the You're gonna want a little cubes of bacon. And the reason we're doing the bacon first is this bacon fat, although it's tasty and beautiful, we don't want to fill our bolognese with a ton of bacon fat. We want a little bit, but not enough that it's going to overpower the rest. Let's get this on the heat, and let's talk about grinding meat. Now, I respect you guys that grind your own meat. Uh, I love you. Congratulations. I'm not grinding my own meat. Uh, this is your classic regular ground beef, not extra lean, regular ground beef and regular ground pork. You want the fat. All right, we have rendered the fat out of our bacon. We've got these crispy little boys in here. We are going to pour out this beautiful bacon fat. Save a teeny bit in there, you want a little bit of flavor. We want a little crispy, little crispy bunches in our ragu. So I'm gonna take a little pinch of meat, toss it in there. This is about 750 grams of pork and about a kilo of ground beef. You want this to brown. So get a nice layer of meat in there and let it brown up before you add uh, the rest. So we're gonna be doing this a couple of times. Me. Don't forget, a ragu is a meat sauce. Don't be using 100 grams of meat and pretending it's a ragu. You need a lot of meat in your meat sauce. You can put garlic in your sofrito. You don't have to. I like adding the garlic later, frying in a little bit of olive oil, letting those natural sugars caramelize, and really smelling your house up beautifully. All you gotta do, smash, 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 and once your meat's out of there, you're just gonna add it straight to the pot into some extra virgin olive oil. Now, don't want this on maxi, medium high is fine, and keep it moving in the pan. You don't, burnt, burnt garlic's gonna ruin your entire dish, so. Wish you could smell this, it smells amazing. And don't forget about your sofrito that we worked so hard on. Grab your sofrito, take a sip. Once your garlic's just got a little color to it, take your sofrito and add it all to the pan. Now we're finally building what most people are gonna call a sauce. Stir your sofrito, your garlic, your olive oil, let it move. Now, this is the time where you don't wear a white shirt, wear a black shirt, because as you can see, it's gonna be splattering and hitting your shirt or wear an apron. Let your sofrito cook down, get your beef back, beef pork, 
back and center here. You may want to add a touch more olive oil to your sofrito. Now, tomato. This is a bolognese after all. Tomato isn't the star, but it's part of the family here. So take some tomato paste, a couple tablespoons. Don't forget, these tomatoes are raw. You don't want raw tomato flavor in your bolognese. So you're gonna have to cook that down for a couple of minutes. Let the tomato paste cook before you carry on. Now, beautiful tomato puree. You can do this yourself. You can add your tomatoes to your sofrito. You can take those tomatoes and use a food mill and put them in the sauce. But really, this is like 60 cents or whatever. Uh, just buy this, add it to the sauce. Salute. Beef broth, classic beef broth. Now, add a little beef broth to both of your tomato puree cans. Give them a shake. We're gonna add these both. That's about 500 mils of beef broth. Add to the sauce. We're layering flavors now, we're building flavors. Don't taste it right now. This is not how it's gonna taste. Don't taste it right now. Add your beef broth. Look at your clean jars now. You can put your milk in and take it to school or whatever. Oh, you're working with a nice red sauce right now, right? Just watch. We're gonna let this reduce with the meat in it. Add your beef to the pot. It's getting a little, a little crowded in the pot here, so be careful. Cup, last thing before you let it reduce. A couple bay leaves. Again, the Italians are not happy about the bay leaves, but it's gonna taste good, so just trust me. A couple bay leaves, stir those in and let this reduce, maybe 45 minutes, an hour. It's gonna sit on here, it's gonna reduce, all the flavors are gonna get to know each other, the sofrito, the meat, everything's gonna get well acquainted. And in an hour's time, we're gonna come back probably another inch lower in the pot. Alright, we've completed our first reduction. We've got about another inch of space on the pot here, and we got a nice thick red sauce. Now we're gonna quickly turn this red sauce to a brown sauce. And the way that we're gonna do that is with a cup of milk or heavy cream, homo milk, half and half, whatever you got in your fridge, you can use it and add that to the pot. And we're also gonna add about two, three tablespoons of butter. That's really gonna elevate the richness, the umami, the fat profile that we've got in our bolognese. All right, we've waited over, it's been hours. We've been drinking, we are might have a little blush going. If you can see, you can't really see, but there's a layer of fat on the top of our bolognese. I got a quick fix for that. Grab a piece of bread and just skim the top fat. Skim that top fat. The bread's gonna soak in the fat and leave behind your beautiful ragu. And this, honestly, is pretty good eating. You could just... I'll take that all day. Now, your ragu is pretty much complete. You could leave this going for days, hours, at least hours. But for the purpose of time, we're doing really good here. This sauce looks wonderful. I'm gonna pull this off the heat. On the heat now, is some out boiling water, really boiling water. Now we're going to add, first and foremost, a very generous couple pinches of salt. Salgado con amare, right, uh, Nona? That's what it's supposed to be. We're gonna portion out 
some classic spaghetti uh, that we're going to pair with this ragu. If you're a big dog like me, I might use my index finger and get a nice load of spaghetti. That's probably going to be my portion right there. Oh, right there. It's quite a bit. But if you're a littler person, you might want to use your pinky finger. It might be a little smaller. And, uh, and yeah, portion that out. Let this spaghetti soften up, come to a boil, and then it's time to plate up. All right, our pasta has come to a beautiful, it seems al dente, got a little bent to it. Actually, it gives you a couple seconds. Take a look, then check for seasoning again. and adjust as necessary. Last thing you're gonna wanna add to your bolognese is just a touch of the pasta water. That starchiness is gonna help get a more conclusive sauce. Pasta should be ready. And look at this bolognese, it's incredible. We're gonna take this on our meat sauce, directly on our spaghetti. One more ladle, nice two ladles on top of our spaghetti. Grana Padano, your Parmigiano Reggiano, your cheddar of choice, whatever the hell you want. And great. And a little Parmigiano Reggiano on top. Five hours later, we've gotten to this point. You're a little buzz. That's okay. You're a little tired. That's for sure. But you've got. A group of family waiting and you're about to wow them now. Be sure you give it a taste. I want to crack a little fresh pep before you give it a taste. Let's see what we've done here. This is what it's all about, baby. Six hours, seven hours, eight hours, whatever it takes, that's what it's all about. This is a hamburger helper, baby. This is the good. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This is Lost in the Sauce. I'm your boy, Fest Cooks, and I'm gonna keep cooking for y'all, but I gotta go. I gotta finish this up. See you guys in the next episode. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your mama, your tita, your nona, your sister, your brother, and if you want to see another Lost in the Sauce video, click right here, and please subscribe down below to my channel, Best Cooks.